My name is Albert Ide. I produced and directed Bluegrass Country Soul back in 1971. Here I am with the camera on a Camp Springs, North Carolina. And so far we've taken a look at the work that was done by Robert Taylor, here the director of photography, shooting J.D. Crow and the Kentucky Mountain Boys on stage, and also John Dildine, who is a sound man. Here he is out in the field with his portable deck, uh, trying to get ready for an interview with Carl McCainy. Now, if you take a look at the credits for Bluegrass Country Soul, you get an idea of the hierarchy. Uh, and here we have the opening credit, and then we go to uh, Robert Taylor as the director of photography. The next credit that comes up is for John Dildine, who did the sound. And the third credit that comes up is for Joel Jacobson, who designed the credits and also was the editor of the film. Now, Joel was an incredible find and exactly the person we needed at the time. And he was a filmmaker, producer down in Washington, D.C., and uh, he came on board. He loved bluegrass music, which was, a, which was a great help to us. But he also had an assistant editor, Doug McCash, who was a musician. And Doug was great to have around because he knew all of the bluegrass guys. Doug played the mandolin in the opening of the film, uh, playing Sally Gooden there, and Doug was actually down at the festival and we caught him on film. Here he is sitting with Courtney Johnson. Now, Doug and Joel had a lot to do on this film when we came back from the lab. We had tons of film and magnetic tape of all the sound, and we had to sit down with both of them and we went through every single foot of film and started discussing how we were going to put it together in order to show people what it was like to go to a bluegrass festival back in 1971. And uh, after about three or four months, we were able to put together uh, what we thought was a very comprehensive look at the festival. Here we started at something we shot first thing on one Friday morning and uh, a pan across the festival grounds and we can see a lot of the buses aren't there yet. But uh, Bob Kaler got uh, his camera on his shoulder and walked right up to the stage and started shooting the Lilly Brothers with Tex Logan and Don Stover. And then it was up to Joel and, and Doug to try and capture all the sights and sounds of a bluegrass festival. And uh, at the time, this was uh, early on in the bluegrass uh, festival scene, and uh, we thought that this would help attract a lot of the general movie-going audience to bluegrass uh, festivals. Now this opening shot is something where I was hoping that we would see a lot of cars coming down this road, uh, and uh, we ended up only getting a couple of them. But uh, when we went back to Camp Springs in 2021 for the 50th anniversary of the film, uh, I took a look down this road and you couldn't even see the end of the road because the trees had grown up so much in the past 50 years. And that's the kind of thing that you just don't think about at the time. Now, we have all these different shots around the festival, uh, some of which I took, some of which Bobby uh, Decker took, and some of which Bob Taylor took. And we tried to capture a lot of these different sites. Now, if you look carefully down this uh, particular shot here, uh, you'll see a couple of people down at the bottom of this glen kind of chatting with each other. In the 4K restoration of the film, for the first time, I was able to identify who they were. And maybe some of you may also be able to catch that. So again, matching the film with the sound of the Lily Brothers playing on stage, and then cutting back to show you uh, Don Stover here with the banjo and his claw hand kind of style. Uh, this was uh, not that easy to do, but Joel Jacobson had a two-headed tape deck, uh, a, a steam deck, so he was able to watch two separate pieces of film at the same time. So we had the actual footage and the sound of Black Mountain Rag on one deck, and then we were able to take a look at the other shots that were taken around the festival grounds and try to match them to see if we can get uh, something that kind of went with the music. I'm reminded of the cost of color film back then, and it's so great now to see uh, these, this festival in living color. Uh, it was something that, it was probably one of the largest parts of our entire budget.
Now, one of the uh, people that show up in this film is quite interesting, I think. Uh, the fellow on the horse here at the pond is the father of Cody Johnson, and Cody and his wife Donna now own Bluegrass Park, and they were the ones who put together this great 50th anniversary of the filming of Bluegrass Country Soul at the Festival Park um, back in 2021. And we felt that it was important not only to capture the music on stage, but also to show the surroundings of the festival and the people who were there and to get a feeling of what it was like to actually be there. Uh, and here you see these ducks. These ducks are still in the pond. And after 50 years, they don't look a day older. It's absolutely amazing. So after Black Mountain Rag, we thought it would be a great idea to kind of introduce people to Carlton Haney, who was the man who put the whole festival together and gave us permission to come and shoot it. So we followed Carlton as he was walking around the festival grounds and uh, just asked him to kind of explain bluegrass to this audience, uh, this movie audience. And this is what he came up with. Out in the fields of the bluegrass festival, 1965, we started the first bluegrass festival at Cantrell's Horse Farm. And that's how we opened Outside Bluegrass Country Soul, and how a collaboration of many different individuals came together on sound, picture, and editing to bring it all together in one film. And the end result was the 50th anniversary bluegrass box set uh, about Bluegrass Country Soul, and it's still available. And we want to thank all the guys, especially Joel Jacobson and Doug McCash, for all their hard work on making this possible. Thanks, guys.